Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Back on my series on my bachelor's paper for now the last part. It's going to continue in January. We are going to talk about the main actor of my bachelor's paper, semigroups, today. So let's go ahead and get started. What exactly is a semigroup? Well, suppose we have a pair being a magma, meaning it's closed under some certain operation, for example, circle. So let's suppose we have some S together with a binary operation forming a magma. If this magma right here is associative, then we are going to refer to this pair right here as a semigroup. What's associativity? You might have heard of it before. You should when working with the real numbers, natural numbers. You are using it all the damn time. So associativity. So this is a semigroup. If this pair is a magma, and associativity is defined if we have for all x, y, c, or z out of s, it holds that x in composition with parentheses, y in composition with z is the same as parentheses, x in composition with y in composition with z. This right here is called the associative property. And well, if this holds, then we are going to refer to this as a semigroup. Also, if this semigroup has only a finite number of elements, this is going to be a finite semigroup. It does make sense. So associativity basically means that the order of carrying out the operation is not relevant at the moment. But it's relevant in which order we are going to carry out the operation, meaning on our operands. So x times y is not the same as y times x. But if it would be the same, then we would defer, uh, refer to this right here as being abelian. So what's an abelian algebraic structure? Well, abelian just means if for all x and y element of s, it holds that x in composition with y is the same as y in composition with x. And we can also have magmas, which are abelian. Most of the time, people are going to refer to abelian as just commutative. So you can also refer to this as a commutative semigroup then. OK, with this out of the way, we are going to prove today that the natural numbers under addition form an abelian semigroup, meaning we have already shown that the natural numbers under addition form a magma. So all that's left to show is that this property holds for all natural numbers and that this property holds for all natural numbers. We're going to do this in the next part. So as always, we're going to make use of the principle of mathematical induction. And this right here is our proposition. We are going to take some n and m fixed but arbitrary natural numbers. And this is our proposition p of p. And we want this to hold for all natural numbers. So that's what we are going to prove now. So p is our dependent variable, you could say. OK, so let's go ahead and get started with the base step, p of 0. So p of 0, what is that exactly? Well, we are going to plug 0 into here. So we have m plus n plus 0. Well, this is nothing but by the first part of addition, m plus n. But this is nothing but m plus n in parentheses plus 0. OK, you see this has been the base step really quite easy. And now we are going to assume that, well, our proposition is true for some random arbitrary k out of natural numbers. So p of k is true, meaning this is nothing but m plus n plus k equals to m plus n plus k. And now we want to show if this ensures our proposition to be true for p of the success of k. So for p of suck of k, what are we going to get? Well, this is nothing but why not start off at this side, for example. So we have m plus n plus suck of k. But we also know by the second part of addition that we can drag the suck to the front right here. So this is nothing but m plus suck of n plus k. But once again, this is closed under addition. We have shown that this is a magma. So this is just element of natural numbers. So we can just drag the suck to the front once again. So we have the successor of m plus parentheses n plus k. And now we are going to make use of our induction hypothesis, meaning by p of k, we can interchange those parentheses right here to the successor of parentheses m plus n plus k. And you see, this right here is just some 
natural number. So we can reverse this second rule of addition and bring the suck to this k right here. So this is just how it works. If this is a natural number, then this is going to hold. So we have m plus n plus successor of k. And then we are done. So we have shown that this right here is an associative operation, meaning at the moment our, well, natural numbers under addition form a semigroup. And now for the abelian part. So to show that this is a abelian, we have to make sure that our base step would even hold. So for our base step to hold, in regards to our abelian structure, we have to make sure that our zero is going to commute under addition with every other element out of natural numbers. Zero is kind of special, so we have to treat it differently sometimes in a certain different process. So why not show that P of, let's say, N, is nothing but n plus 0 equals to 0 plus n for all n out of natural numbers. So this right here is our proposition and we are going to start off with the base step once again. P of 0. Well, this is nothing but 0 plus 0. Where this is our 0 that we have plugged in. But by the first rule of addition, this is nothing but 0. But we can add a 0 to this by the first rule of addition and it wouldn't change anything. So this is 0 plus a new added 0. So you see, we have shown that the base step holds. And now we are going to assume that a p of k is true for some random arbitrary k out of natural numbers. It's going to be fixed. So k plus 0 is nothing but 0 plus k. Once again, we want to make sure that this thing right here ensures our proposition to be true for the successor of k. So let's go ahead and get started. p of suck of k. What is that exactly? Well, this is nothing but... Um, yeah, we are going to start off from this side, it really doesn't quite matter. So we have 0 plus the successor of k. Why am I starting from this side? Well, we want to make use of the rules of addition right here. Second rule of addition, so this is nothing but the successor of k plus 0. But you see, k plus 0 is just, well, k itself. So first rule of addition, so this is just the successor of k. But right here, it wouldn't really hurt us to add a zero to this thing. By the first rule of addition, it does work. This is just an element of natural numbers. So that's the same as saying we have the successor of k plus zero. Hey, we have shown that the zero commutes with every element here on the natural numbers. We have laid the groundwork for our big proposition that we want to show now. And yeah, we're going to go ahead. This last part is really quite fiddly, but it's doable. We have laid all the groundworks like associativity and uh, commuting property of the number zero. So you see our base step p of zero is well completely clear from our previous lemma we have just derived. So that the zero commutes with everything. Now we are going to introduce some p of k once again for some random arbitrary fixed natural number k which is nothing but n plus k is equal to k plus n for all n out of natural numbers fixed. Not for all natural numbers, for some natural number n which is fixed. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> I rephrased this um, a little bit badly. Once again, we want to make sure that this ensures our proposition to be true for the success of k. So p of suck of k. And we're going to start from this side. So this is nothing but, well, plugging the successor of k in at first, plus n. But by some proposition we have introduced at the start of the series, we know that the successor of k is nothing but k plus the successor of 0. So this is nothing but k plus the successor of 0. Putting this in parentheses because this is um, a number for itself. But we have introduced the associativity right now. So we can just use the associative property to turn this into k plus, well, Parentheses, successor of 0 plus n. Okay, but by our proposition we know that our, well, natural numbers are going to commute. And successor of 0 is just a natural number. So successor of 0 plus n is going to commute by our p of k. Meaning we have k plus, well, n plus the successor of zero. But by our proposition we have established, similarly to this right here, we know that this is nothing but a successor of n. So this is k plus the successor of n. But by the second rule of addition we can bring the successor to the front. So this is the successor of k plus n. But by our proposition we know that this is going to commute all the time. So we know that this is nothing but the successor 
of n plus k. Second rule of addition, we can bring the successor to the back, so this is nothing but, well, n plus the successor of k. And then we are done. So we have shown that our natural numbers are going to commute all the time. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Yeah, that's basically it. You can recommend the channel or whatsoever. You can support the channel in many different ways. And up until the next video, have a flammable day, I guess. See ya! What the? Right. Until next.